You asked for it, and we are delivering. Welcome to the one and only All Access Podcast, all about your Blue Comets football. Welcome to Beyond the End Zone, Blue Comets football, with head coach Calvin Brown. This episode is sponsored by Coach's Neighborhood Grill. Welcome to the one and only All Access Podcast for you, the fans, on your Ashboro Blue Comets football. Welcome to Beyond the End Zone, Blue Comets football. This episode is sponsored by Coach's Neighborhood Grill. And the title is called Focus. And beside me is head coach Calvin Brown. Like, share, and subscribe to this podcast now on Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. YouTube channel Sports in the Borough. Special edition inside the Blue Comets locker room as we have multiple interviews. But for now, right beside me is head coach Calvin Brown. How you doing, coach? Good. How are you? Good, man. Good. Uh, how was the bye week? It was great for us. A uh, chance to kind of regroup a little bit, uh, evaluate where we were at, get our legs back underneath us as we took a couple days off as well. Uh, so it was great for our guys just to, to have that break right now during the season. You know, if you during that break, you could have went to Coach's Neighborhood Grill and got 59 cents on uh, Tuesdays. To, I hear Did Tuesdays that. is the place, the time to be up there at Coach's. Yeah, 59 cent wings at Coach's on Tuesday. And Coach, even karaoke. I don't know if you're a singer, but they have karaoke on Tuesdays. I think we have a few players that like to go up there and enjoy karaoke night. Uh, Lance Everhart and Kai Matthews enjoy karaoke at Coach's on Tuesday nights. Do you have anybody that'd be good at trivia? Because even on Thursdays, they have trivia, Coach. I might have to enjoy that one. <laughs> um, on the bye week, Coach, any updates? Uh, Jalen Moore coming off injury. Uh, we, you know, we talked last week about it, but the title is called Focus, and it's about focusing on Providence Grove, and he's a key factor. So, is he going to be back with us this week? He, he's still questionable right now. Uh, went out to practice uh, and yesterday, and he's still limited, so uh, he's still questionable for this Friday night. And I know you had a bye week, but coaching never stops, as you know. You know, you're always working 24/7, especially in the season. Um, did you go see your old school last week? Uh, we did, just like we would do any, any bye week. We're going to go watch the team that we play the next week. And so uh, we did go to Providence Grove last week to watch them play Bishop and uh, just try to get a, a head start on uh, prepping for them and, and just seeing – a lot of times you can tell things a lot better seeing them live than you do on film. And uh, it was a pretty close game. I mean, they finally had a little competition. Bishop McGinnis, uh, I'm pretty sure their new head coach used to be a coach in our conference, correct? Yes, Coach Holcomb came from uh, Oak Grove. Uh, he retired and took the Bishop McGinnis job. Uh, he's an excellent football coach. He's going to do a great job there at Bishop. And um, he had his guys ready to play, and it was a tight game. But um, there at the end, Providence Grove, uh, because they know how to win and they can find ways to win, them guys are competitors. They, they pulled it out in the end. So uh, great job by them uh, last week getting the win. And the final score was 26 to 20. Um, I feel like uh, Bishop figured out the run game with uh, Fox, but they couldn't stop the QB. Yeah, they were able to uh, focus in on the run a little bit, but then James Ellis, the quarterback, uh, he played incredible. I mean, he completed a ton of passes. I think it was in the third quarter, I felt like it was the first incomplete pass he had thrown. So I thought he did a great job uh, leading the team, and then he was able to get the, the game winning touchdown run late in the game. And what was really interesting was. Uh, 3-0 Providence Grove. So you leave a school, uh, you basically took a program that hadn't seen a playoff victory. You won there. And even though they always say good leaders develop other good leaders. Um, and it seems like you did that at Providence Grove. Yeah, I think those, uh, the kids there in that school and that community just expect to win now in football. And it's nothing that I did. It's just what we did as a whole group. And uh, we had great players that came through there that established that culture as well. So that school and community, they expect to win on Friday nights. And so in tight games like it was against Bishop, they were able to, they were able to find a way to win late, and that helped them out, I believe. But that, that's why it's going to be tough for us this week, just because they have that winning nature about them. And uh, you got a great staff and uh, some great players, and that's why we're going to go inside the Blue Comets locker room with Amari Godwin, Coach Taylor, and Coach Parrish. You asked for it, we're going to give you the O-line coach. Now it's time to go Inside the Blue Comets Locker Room. Welcome to Inside the Blue Comets Locker Room. Here with me is another Blue Comets standout, number seven, Amari Godwin. 11 receptions, 192 yards, two TDs, and two weeks. It's pretty impressive. Yes, sir. And uh, rumor has it you had a pretty awesome fifth grade teacher at uh, Balfour. Yeah, she was pretty cool. I liked her. We were definitely her best class. So... Yeah. I mean, for 15 years, I mean, they're going to, I think the other class is going to try to compete against you on that one. I don't think they'll come close. So, yeah. <laughs> well, 
Well, listen, we know Balfour is an awesome elementary school, so, you know, we got to give them some love. You're welcome, Mr. Tuff. New coaching staff, senior year. I mean, I know you're excited about to graduate. Time flies by. I know sophomore year you had a little uh, a torn ACL, if I'm correct, right? Sophomore yes, year? Yeah. I know recovering from that had to be frustrating. Yeah, it was a whole year out of my uh, everything, all the sports. I couldn't play any of them. Just had to focus on um, physical therapy and getting stronger. So, yeah. And then you come out to, you know, a tough season, one and nine, and then you come to a brand new coaching staff. Um, and it seems like it's been, the culture's changing. Yeah, I feel like it's changing because last year, like you said, one and nine wasn't the best. I feel like um, as we've, like, grown and, like, we've got, we've got to this year and, like, we've seen everybody, like Jalen and E and all them, we, like, we really put our hearts into this, so, like, we're trying to go somewhere, make something happen from this, so, yeah. And it's a pretty good start. One and one is not a bad start, especially when the loss was really, really close. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, two touchdowns. I mean, y'all were two touchdowns away. If y'all would have capitalized on that red zone, you're looking at a potential 2-0. and o. Yeah. I feel like we should have won that game, but um, just the little things that we were focused well, – that's the little things that we need to focus on, I would say, because – that was really what lost us the game, I feel like, because we got to capitalize in the end zone, uh, red zone, like you said, stopping them on those long drives that they had. So. Yep, and like you said, I think it was, I mean, honestly, the defense held. Y'all held pretty tough, but like you said, three plays y'all gave up, and those were the three touchdowns they ended up getting. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, on the bright side is it's like we always talk about compete, and that's what Coach wanted this year, and y'all are competing. We've got to. If we really want to get somewhere with this whole football thing, because, you know, I play three sports, so, like, it may not be my favorite, but I, I still love it. So You're pretty good at it. You sure it's not your favorite? <laughs> no, it's definitely not my favorite. <laughs> I would say you're going uh, pretty wild against Eastern, two touchdowns. I mean, that's got to be exciting. I mean, how's that feel after two weeks? I mean, you had some big catches week one in that win against Albemarle. Um, I mean, fourth down, were you, did you know you were going to catch it, or did you just go, let's go, cl close your eyes? What happened in that play? <laughs> nah, I knew I was going to catch it. It's just like when you know – you just know when you're going to catch something or, like, easy catches. You do it every day in practice. You practice it over and over. Even when they're harder catches, I still feel like, oh, yeah, that's me. Like, yeah. I know I'm catching that. And the like, footwork was great. Me. I mean, it looked like something in college or in the NFL, the way you called it. I was like, okay. I was like, because oh, uh, yeah. I was filming it, and I got the perfect angle. I was like, oh, wow, all right. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to see that, though, because – I'll make sure you get a copy of that. How about that? I'll send it yeah. to you. Um, but, yeah, uh, what's crazy is – it was a big game. You stepped up. Everyone talked about how Amari had that big catch that set us up, a couple of good catches. Mm -hmm. Then your week two, my man, you got two touchdowns. Not one, but two. How did that feel? That, that felt awesome. I felt like I was just trying to capitalize because they were more focused on E. I feel like because E, he's good, but, like, we have three other people that can score yep. the ball really well. So I felt like we showed that this week. Well, how important is that to have – uh, those other weapons like Woodle, Robinson, Luck. I think mean, Leighton plays a little bit, right? Uh, I feel like that's like super important. That's one of the be um, best things that we like have is to be able to go anywhere we want to, like anytime, any play. Because Aiden and like E, Ben, Leighton, they can all get the ball whenever they want to and get yards for like whenever we need. And I know Logan's gonna get it to him, so. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty good quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's 541 uh, in two weeks, passing yards, five TDs. It's pretty impressive with two yeah. interceptions. But, I mean, that's part of the game. It was, it was down the end of the wire and a tip, and then you're going against a D1 athlete. Yeah. You know, that's a, But he didn't back down from him. Mm -mm. He stepped up and got the tackle. So. <laughs> um, so how important is to have chemistry with these teammates? Uh, it's super important because, like, hanging out and just, like, you always got to keep it like a positive um, attitude and stuff like that, because if you, they see you like they see you down, because we're like the leaders kind of a, mm -hmm. the whole thing, because like if we're down, they're gonna see that, and we can't have them being down, because then they're not gonna want to like go as hard and stuff like that, because they're gonna have their heads down and stuff like that. So they, we always got to be up and like having the best attitudes and all that stuff. Your uh, coach Brown and coach Handy uh, coming in. What you think about that? Um, Two great staff, Handy, your, your position coach, and uh, also your offensive coordinator and Coach Brown, a new head coach. Those two know the game. Yeah, they definitely do. Um, I like them. They they really know they know how to use like what we have, like our speed, our agility, stuff like that. Because um, like 
like regular plays, stuff like that. Like, I know regular plays, like you're running plays, yeah, we're gonna do that, but like we can do anything we want to, and they know that. So like, passing the play, putting the um, ball in the end zone whenever we need to, we can easily do that with them because they know what they're doing, like you said. But um, with like our speed, and we can get whenever we want to, we can get wherever we want to. So yeah, as long as Logan gets us the ball. Uh, which I know he's going to do, so, yeah. <laughs> and as you prepare for Providence, one of my last questions this week, uh, what you preparing for and what you got to tell the fans to get their butts in the seats? Um, we're really just preparing for um, their run game. I mean, we saw that they can throw the ball a little bit, but he really is just going to throw it up there, and I know if he throws it up there, we're going to get it. So we're definitely going to try to um, – stop the passing game and then focus more on the run game so yeah and i know y'all just need to come out and see us because hey we're like that all right well tell them to get their butts there friday at providence grove 7 30 september 8th come support your blue comments amari and the team i think amari's about to have some more big time plays and uh thanks for joining us amari and uh now we're gonna go inside the locker room with coach taylor all right, Coach Taylor, welcome to Inside the Blue Comets locker room, Mr. Randleman. Uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, background. Yeah, so um, I did graduate from Randleman. Um, as much as I still love those guys, I don't always claim it just because of where I'm at and where I've um, come to. But, yeah, Randleman. Um, Are they the orange team? Is that what I keep hearing? This yeah, show? yeah, they're the orange <laughs> team. They treated me well um, all four years, and I was able to learn a lot from those coaches and kind of led me to where I am today. Um, Shane Handy was guy that was very influential to me and kind of led me down the path to being a teacher and a coach. And so I'm very thankful for that. And several guys over there too. Um, so I went from Randleman to Appalachian State, graduated from App State, and then made my way from Providence Grove to now Ashboro. For what brought you to the coaching side? Um, so I actually had a weird story with my college stuff. So I, uh, when I graduated, I thought I wanted to go into pediatrics. I was always one of the smarter kids and make good grades and stuff, and I wanted to go to med school. And then when I f first got into college, I was like, nah, I'm not gonna go to school for 12 years. I'm gonna find something else that I wanna do that I can work with people and make an impact. And I did do an internship during my freshman year of college where I was helping out random in high school and doing some tutoring, and that kind of led me into, hey, I really think I'd like teaching. And I knew I would like coaching. I was always into all sports, football, baseball, basketball, whatever. And so then I made the decision to transfer to Appalachian because they had a good teaching program. And then the rest is history from here. And uh, you, st you ended up getting the Providence Grove uh, position. Uh, what, what, what was it right off the bat? Was it a DB coach? What did Coach Brown bring you in as a coaching? Um, so I just came in as an assistant um, defensive coach. I was a defensive backs coach, corners and safeties together. And it's kind of funny because I tell Coach Brown this to his face. I didn't want to take the job at Providence Grove. I did not. I was a diehard random guy. I'd been talking with them about getting a job there out of college, like all three years. And um, when it came time to do it, they didn't have my position open at that time. And so they wanted to get me to take a different subject. And I just couldn't bring it to myself to teach something that I didn't go to school for. And so I talked to Calvin a lot. And he had really fought for me to get that job there at Providence Grove, and I was very grateful for that and took it. And I'm so thankful I did because of where we're at now. Um, but, yeah, I was a defensive backs coach, and pretty much early on I was learning. I mean, I knew the game of football. I didn't know the game of football from the coaching side. And so there's a lot to learn when you start trying to break down an opposing offense and figure out what to look for versus just showing up and saying, hey, we're running these drills. Yeah, it's a different um, set of goggles. <laughs> yeah, and so – um, I got to learn a lot from Coach Brown and Coach Hunt. Those are Coach Hunt's our defensive coordinator, but and I help him very closely. But Coach Brown is also our guy. He used to be a former defensive coordinator, and so he helps a lot too with that side when we want to break down and another team or talk about, hey, let's do this this week. And he'll kind of help make those decisions too. So I've learned a lot from them, and it's been it's been very beneficial for me. And uh, let's before we dive into the team, uh, let's talk about a little bit about what. What brought you to Ashborough? I know you love coaching, um, and, but you, also you got a math position here. Uh, what, what, what math are you teaching? So I teach AP pre-calculus um, and then two math two classes. 
Okay, so you got the. So it sounds like math was what you want to do at Providence. You go to Providence, uh, you build a bond with these coaches, and uh, Coach Brown gets a job at Ashboro. What made you come to a? I mean, I, like I said numerous times, and I'm sure the fans are tired of hearing it. A two one and nine seasons. It's not really attractive. Right, and so um, at the end of the day, I mean, teaching is important, and that's what that's what pays my bills is being a teacher. And so I knew I'd have a nice, stable math job here. Um, I really respected Dr. Moody a lot, and so I was excited about that. But it came down to one thinking about me and my future, one thinking about my family and their future. Um, as most people know, it's, a, it's just a slight, it's very slight, but there's a little pay increase to come yeah. to Asheboro City. Um, also, just knowing that um, I've got a newborn, so if you listen to the first episode, you hear Coach Handy talk about that I had a newborn. And so... Yeah, y'all um, rebuilding uh, Ashboro Athletics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one by one, right? But So I've got a newborn at home, and just knowing if I'm going to spend as much time as I am as a coach, and we spend a lot of time outside of just practice hours and stuff, breaking down film, showing up for meetings, and doing all that stuff, if I'm going to do that and sacrifice time from my family, it's got to be with the guys that I'm comfortable with. It's got to be with guys that I've coached with before because – they're going to understand what I'm going through. They're going to be there for me. And not that any other situation wouldn't, but it's just the comfortability from having those guys that I was close with. I mean, we're not just, we don't just coach together. We're, we're friends and we're buddies and we'll get together when we can when we have free time and hang out and stuff. So it's, it's good to keep that going and keep that relationship because just for being happy with, with guys at work. Like, I mean, it's just football is one thing, but it's another thing of just showing up and, being with people and working with people that you enjoy being with. Um, you know, you come in, you know, everyone's like, all right, what is this coaching staff going to bring? They see the energy. They love the energy. I mean, everyone, if you haven't seen the workout video, uh, Coach Taylor got after him in the uh, off-season workouts a couple of times. It was pretty exciting to see because even uh, Coach, I don't know if you've seen some of the comments, but parents are saying these are the kind of coaches that they've always wanted their boys to have that care but also give them that tough love. That's and awesome. and uh, what I want to ask you about is, as you come in week one, you get the W. That's got to be exciting. It was very emotional on the sidelines. I was trying to film it, but y'all were everywhere. It was hard to capture every bit of the moment because when y'all won that game, y'all were jumping up and down. I was like, where is everybody? But those emotions had to be pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, so it was, it was great getting that first one out of the way. Um, we know what we're capable of and we know what we can do as long as – as long as we can get everybody on the same page and make sure we're, we're doing what, we're, what we need to do and we stay disciplined, we've got so much potential. And so we're just trying to, we're trying to pick from, get from that potential as much as we can and get as much out of our guys so that they can be successful. It's not about us. We're not the ones playing. I mean, yeah, we want to win, but ultimately we're not the ones doing it. We're not doing it for our benefit. Nobody cares if the assistant DB coach has a win on his record. Like, I don't care about that. I want to see these guys have fun and be happy. And I hate to say it, you're happier when you're winning. And so we right. want to go win. And so that first one was great. And it was awesome to let to see Coach Brown get that um, as his first time as a head coach here in the first game. And it was great for the fans to get to see it um, because it's the first win on the home field in a while, I feel yeah. like, from what I've heard. So Focus has been a key thing. Um, you made some adjustments week one. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, Kai Matthews was getting a little bullied uh, by Albemarle couple of times towards the end of the game, and he finally just got, got, got a, had enough of it to get that game-win interception. Uh, did you see that during the game? What adjustments did you make? What kind of confidence did you put in him and the other DBs to go, hey, guys, yeah, they're taking a drive, but there's no reason to put your head down. We're still in this fight. Yeah, so just co coaching DBs in general is tough because, and I'll argue with anybody about this, it's it, one of the, if not the hardest position to play on defense. Um, and because when you mess up, everybody knows. Oh, yeah. I mean <laughs> – and so the play that uh, the big play that Kai got beat on in the fourth quarter, fourth down at twelve, whatever it was, we go man and we bring pressure and we're trying to get to the quarterback. We don't get there, and so asking a defensive back to cover for a while is is tough. Now there were some adjustments that we had to make, and there's some things that we can learn from and that. He's playing as both a, sides of the ball too, That's right? Tough. <laughs> um, but as a DB, we talked about some things, and I don't want to go into detail about the adjustments we made because they may come back to help us later. And so, yeah. but we made some adjustments that. I was like, hey, this is what we got to do. This is what we've talked about. And I let them know in practice every day. I'm like, listen, man, you're going to get beat. As a defensive back, somebody's going to beat you on a route. Somebody's going to catch a ball. It's not the end of the world because the best players in the NFL, they give up catches all the time. It just happens. When you play man coverage, somebody's going to catch a ball on you. And so 
I try to instill that in them so that they don't lose confidence. They're mm -hmm. still just as good as they were before that guy just caught the ball. And I think he really he honed into that. He's like, all right, so what? I got this next play. And he answered back, and he got the game-winning interception, and we went nuts. I mean, <laughs> it's just that's what – I mean, they got to be able to do that. And yeah. so that's why I try to talk to him like, listen, guys, you can't lose confidence. You can't. You're going to get beat, and somebody's going to make a play on you, and then you're going to make a play. Yeah, and DB is a tough spot. I mean, you are the last line of defense, <laughs> especially yeah. in that safety role. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we go into week two. Uh, our episode last th last week was called Compete. You competed. Um, it was a tough loss. Uh, there, honestly, your defense held strong, Coach. Uh, the only thing is they gave up three big plays that cost the game. But other than that, it was a pretty – I mean, you look at the film, you tell me if I'm wrong, it was a pretty solid you know, show of defense. Yeah, um, I thought we played well. We were swarming to the football. We were getting after it. We were really making sure we had guys getting there to help make the tackle because I don't think we didn't tackle well in week one. Uh, we made it through with a win, but we did not tackle well. Mm -hmm. And we had too many guys standing around expecting the next guy to make the tackle. And I feel like against Eastern Randolph, that changed a little bit. But, yeah, it's the big play. We've got to eliminate the big play, and we preach it all the time. If you can make the offense snap the ball again, good things will happen. And I'm going to give a shout-out to TJ right now, and I've – TJ, if you're listening to this, I've told you this already five times in front of everybody, but in the Eastern Randolph game, their running back broke loose. Some, something happened, breaking loose towards a concession stand. He's about to score. TJ chases him down, tackles him on the five. And that's a play that in the past or some guys, they might say, hey, he's going to score or whatever. I'm, next play, our nose guard strips it from the running back and we get the ball back. I mean, it's just those little things – make or break a defense, making the offense snap it again, eliminating the big play, and we failed to do that a couple times against East Randolph, but I think we showed a lot more promise in that game defensively, even if the stats didn't look as good or whatever. As a defensive unit, we looked a lot stronger. And speaking of tired, I mean, they're going to be tired. they got two straightaway games, Coach. How do you prepare your guys, and especially these DBs, for not only the heat but to be on the road twice against two pretty solid teams? Yeah, so playing on the road um, – Personally, for me, I've never looked at it as being anything different. Um, and so I just think they have to go in with the same mentality they do at home. I mean, you got to bring the same energy, the same excitement. Whether or not our fans are going to travel or what, whatever happens with that, that doesn't matter. We're playing for the guys that are on the field. We're playing for the, with, with the guys that are in between the lines. And everybody else, it's great to have them there. But at the end of the day, we're doing it for us, and we're doing it for these kids. And so they've got to realize, hey, it's about us right now. It doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter who we're in front of. We're going to go and we're going to try to win. And for the, the tired aspect, the heat, man, the heat's going to affect everybody. It's going to affect everybody the same. And so we just got to hope that we're on the better end of it. Um, I'm sure, I don't knock on wood, but I'm sure you're going to have guys cramping. <laughs> yeah. Both sides, both teams, whatever. Let's just hope that we like got Like Eastern. Left. I mean, you yeah. had some cramps on the Eastern. <laughs> yeah, and we had some too. I mean, yeah. they had a couple guys fall out for cramps. We had a couple. We just we got to be on the better end of it. Um, stay in shape as best we can and week one uh coaches against a familiar team yeah <laughs> um so yeah not week one excuse me your first away game is against a familiar team yeah they're familiar and um those guys man those guys at providence grove they they've got it instilled in them they've got the confidence they know they know what to expect and they're going to go out and do what they do um but really just looking at that situation I know that they know. I've talked to some of the kids over the past couple of weeks. There's nothing but love there. Um, they know the reason why coaching decisions were made. And I don't think between the players' aspect, there's a ton of hard feelings because they, they know we love them and they know it has nothing to do with them as players. And we'd be there coaching their tails off if it wasn't for this opportunity. And so, um, but I know we're excited about it. As a staff, we're excited about it. As a team, we're excited about it. Um, mm -hmm. Because we got to go, we got a chance to go knock an undefeated team off. They're they're three and zero right now, and we're one and one. We get to go prove ourselves. Hey, we can compete with anybody. We go beat a three and zero team. What does that say about us? And who's really stepped up right now that you just trust, like you know you can trust in that's been a leader for you on the DB side, player wise. <sighs> Man, that's a tough question. Because to me, because you have I, a lot of people going in and out, coach. You, right, you have a good rotation. I tell those guys, and so that's why it's a tough question. I trust all of them. And mm -hmm. I really do. Now, in terms of who has become a leader, um, I feel like that's changed week to week. Um, I f feel like right now if I had to handpick one, who's going to lead my, my DBs and make sure everybody's got energy, everybody's going hard, everybody's focused on the game plan, right now I'd pick Kai Matthews. Okay. And I say that 
Kai's not perfect. Kai messed up in practice three times yesterday, and he got frustrated, and we got frustrated with him. But at the same time, he is trying with everything he has to get better every play. When I talk as a group, he's listening. Whenever I install something or we put in something for that week, he's listening. And not that the other guys don't, all right? And that's why I say I trust all of them. I think um, we've got a really good DB group, and we've got some serious talent and some athletes in there that I feel comfortable rotating guys that might not be labeled as a starter in just as much as a starter. And so that's been really – we've been really fortunate to have that because they like they have to play offense too, and they go yeah. both ways. And so we're able to have trust in those guys that are really second string or third string, which really they are just – they're just all in one group, you know, and so I think that's – and another guy, too, I don't want to leave him out. TJ's been really phenomenal the past couple of weeks. He's stepped up. He kind of got banged up early on, so week one he was hurting and he was he had gotten hurt in his scrimmage, and so he was kind of a different player. But the past – against Eastern Randolph, he kind of stepped up and he showed what he's capable of as a player, and I was impressed by that. And speaking of that, I know you uh, they got to work hard in practice because on the other side you got to – Good friend of yours, uh, Coach Handy. I feel like I'll get a little excited in practice going against each other. Yeah, so um, it's it's fun with Coach Handy. Me and him, we got both got hired with Coach Brown the same year. We both when we kind of became buddies at that point, and we've gotten closer as the years have gone on. Especially with how things have happened. Um, he got married, and then I got married, and he had a kid, and I had a kid. So we kind of it was actually funny. It was uh, about the kid part. He had come in and told everybody, you know, that they were pregnant and they were expecting or whatever. And at that time, I had known that <laughs> that there was a possibility we were, but I was not at the point where we could we were telling anybody or saying anything. So it was kind of funny. And so um, I got to come in and tell all them about it too. And it was it's cool to have that because we've got that connection with each other in that aspect yeah. outside of just football. And I mean, we both like play golf, like do this and that. And so it's fun getting to work with a guy like that. But in practice, it's different, all right? Whenever, <laughs> when my receiver or when my DBs are going against his receivers or whatever, it's, we get to compete and we get to talk about it. And we also get to get better as coaches because I'm learning what he's teaching his receivers to then try to help my DBs counteract those things. And mm -hmm. the same thing for him. He's like, all right, DB lines up with this much cushion. You get this type of release, whatever. And I'm telling my guys, all right, if this guy wants to stem you on the route this way, then maintain your leverage. And all those things that we want to do to get better, we're able to do it together because he's got a lot of knowledge. I'll give him some credit. I don't like to give him credit too often. <laughs> he says the same thing about you. <laughs> yeah. I don't like to give him credit too often, but he's, he is the best receiver coach I've ever been around. And that's, that's – he, He's fun. He's fun to watch. And I even learned a few things. And I'm not even a coach for football. And I'm just like, wow, I wish I'd known that when I was a receiver. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly – dude, I, I told him. I'm like, I loved my coaches to death. But if they taught me the stuff – and maybe they did and I forgot. But I don't think I ever learned at the level of, like, fundamental and discipline he teaches with route running. So it's impressive. And, I mean, that's why, that's why our passing game has been pretty dang phenomenal the first two mm -hmm. weeks because we've got him – getting these receivers and giving these techniques and they're getting to the right spot and, and at the end of the day they're making plays, but he's helping them do that better. While eating popcorn, apparently. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> the popcorn. Man. Don't get me started on the freaking popcorn. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll end I always got to give him a shout. I always got to give him a shout yeah. out with the popcorn. I always tell him, Coach Handy, I know you're listening. I'm going to have my popcorn. But I feel like I'll talk a little smack to each other in practice, though. Yeah, that can happen from time to time. Um, and it's really, it's more of just just the relationship that mm -hmm. him and I have. Like, it may not even be football related. We just joke back and forth. But honestly, I mean, it makes that's one thing I kind of was talking about earlier. It makes the day enjoyable. I'm, you're coaching with your buddies, you know, the same way that I would act with the guys I grew up with that I've been friends with for 20 years, you know. And so um, that's a lighter side of practice. Sometimes, Sometimes might say things, it might get taken a little too far or whatever, but at the end of the day, it's all jokes, you know, and the kids know that, and they, they think it's funny, you know, they feed <laughs> off of it, and um, I think it's a good, a good environment to have, a good relationship to have. That's pretty awesome. Would you hire him as your uh, personal trainer? Personal trainer? Yeah, I mean, the dude's a strength coach. You, personal you trust trainer. <laughs> I know I teach math, but I'll go in the weight room with him any day. I hope oh, you're listening, wow. Coach Handy. Wow, I think we got a challenge, Coach Handy. Um, <laughs> all right, a couple last things before we wrap up with you, Coach. Uh, let's talk about some excitement after the couple away games. I know you're not looking too far down the road, but you got a Jumbotron coming here soon. I actually, walking in, I saw them taking the fences away so they could start building it. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I knew we were getting it. I didn't know how soon we were getting it. Um, 
Yeah, man, what they're what they have started doing around this place um, is phenomenal. The the way that everybody's kind of jumped on board with trying to make a true change with the athletic program as a whole, because um, it's not just going to help football. I mean, it's going to help everything, and it's going to just the jumbotron's awesome. Our practice facility that we're going to get is going to be awesome. Hopefully, if any booster people are listening or people from the city are listening, maybe a field house coming soon. You know, anything like that. I mean. Those are the things that all right, Ogburn. You hear that, Mayor? You got that? All right. Yeah, field house. <laughs> but those are just some things that just add some pieces to the program. That I mean, just as me and you do, those guys they like nice stuff, is just like all of us. So mm-hmm. if they've got some nice things to work with, they've got good equipment, they've got a good place to practice. It's going to make their life more enjoyable. They're going to talk to their friends more. There's so many kids walking these halls that don't play football right now that I see that need to play football. And we, I mean, we're trying to get them <laughs> yeah. out, but for next year, obviously not this year, but being primarily new staff, we're trying to just get to know all the kids right now, you know, but those things will bring the kids out of the hallways and onto the field just because like, dang, that's cool. Let's go, let's go play football, you know? And so I think that that's going to help be, make some changes just in itself. And obviously the community is going to be proud of it they're going to be excited about it. And so you get the community support, you get the kids in the hallways that aren't out coming out. I mean, everything's going to start changing little by little. And so that's, and that's our, that's our goal. That's everybody's goal. Yeah. I'm excited actually uh, to see some videos up there. I think it's going to look really exciting and hyped and yeah, we don't have a motorcycle at Providence Grove, but you can't tell me that'd be dope to have a entrance video to run out to on a jumbotron. Oh yeah. That would be sick. And we can always make the motorcycle happen. <laughs> <I'm not kidding. laughs> We'll leave maybe maybe we'll get like a moped. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, we'll leave that for PG. They, they get that one. Um, so as we wrap up, any advice to the fans, anything to tell them to get their tails over to Providence Grove Friday, 730? We need to pack it out. Yeah. Um, it's, we know they're bringing it. <laughs> yeah. They, it's going to be loud. It's going to be exciting. And we're hoping you see the best game Asheville football's played in years. All right. And so we need everybody there. We need all the support we can get. And we need some excitement. We need student section involved. We need, they've got their theme. They're ready to go. And so we need, we need everybody bought in on this. And at the end of the day, you guys will get to see Asheville win and we'll have a great night with it. Well, Coach, I appreciate you joining us. And uh, our next interview, you might enjoy it. It's going to be Coach Parrish. Oh, yeah, let's go. I can't wait for Coach Parrish. All right, we're inside the coach's locker room, and no one better than uh, Coach Parrish, the O-line coach. We, you ass fans, and uh, we're delivering. Coach, how you doing? Good, man. Doing real good. Um, tell us the fans your background, Mr. Providence Grove, class of 2015. Yeah, um, so I graduated from Providence Grove 2015, uh, played football, wrestling, track there. Um, was always super involved in any sports going on. Even, you know, if I wasn't playing them, I was there at the basketball games, you know, as many games as I could be at, baseball games, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I went to Providence Grove, graduated in 2015. I went to Avery University right out of high school. Um, played football there for a year. Um, that's ended, in Virginia, right? Yeah, 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 that's in Danville. Uh huh. Um, ended up having to come back home because my dad wanted to start his own business. Mm-hmm. So uh, helped him for about two years getting that off off the ground. And then luckily, um, Coach Brown and our old AD at Providence Grove, Danny Martin, he uh, they gave me the opportunity to start coaching with them, and I've been doing that ever since. And um, I've been a teacher's assistant for the past six years over at PG, um, but this year I'm actually finally. Uh, teaching my own classroom so that's pretty exciting yeah and what subject are you teaching coach uh, social studies yep man history and uh, history yep. as we talk about history yourself coach I mean fans uh, I went online and looked up his uh, huddle account and you <laughs> oh, can Lord. find it look up coach uh, <laughs> coach Parrish you'll find it I'm telling you right now you don't want to miss it I mean mr. 75 here was a beast I mean <laughs> they would pull him out guys and and ladies, and he would just lay out people. I mean, you can even see a photo of a Trinity player with their helmet off from where Coach just, I mean, annihilated them. Uh, <laughs> Coach, uh, you had a mean streak in you. <laughs> I did have a little bit of a mean streak, but, you know, you kind of have to have that playing offensive line. You know, you got to have a little bit of grittiness about you. So. And it's the most yeah. important position, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean you, can't, you can't start the game without him, yeah. and you can't do anything without yeah. him. Everything starts right there up front with those five guys. So, you know, it's one of the most – a lot of people say it is the most important position on the, on the team, so – 
And what's crazy is I try to get Coach Brown next year, his senior year, Logan, to make all your old linemen <laughs> walk into class. <laughs> I wish we could do that right now, yeah. Uh -huh. I told him you better give them all good Christmas presents. When I was working in the NFL, they all, uh, we always picked around the quarterback. I always bought all his old linemen <laughs> some good Christmas presents. Yep, absolutely. Uh -huh. Maybe take them out for a steak dinner sometime. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we get Hamilton's to come on here and be a sponsor. Yeah, there yeah, you go. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, so what, what made you come here, Coach, to help rebuild a football program at Ashboro? Um, honestly, I mean, two one and nine seasons is not attractive. No, it's not. But honestly, it was just a new opportunity. You know, all I've known, you know, my football career is Providence Grove. You mm -hmm. know, and I love that place to death. You know, I said when I left there, I hope they win every game but one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, you know, it was just a new opportunity for me. Um, you know, a new challenge. And like I said, just starting off teaching this year. You know, I felt like it was a great fit for me, you know. Because you're ISS at Providence, right? Yeah, I was ISS and intervention, um, teacher's assistant. And like I said, just seen a new opportunity for me. Um, when Coach Brown came to me and said, hey, look, you know, I'm going to Asheboro, I said, I'm all in. You know, mm -hmm. I, and if you'd asked me a month before that if I would have gone anywhere else, I probably would have said no. But <laughs> as soon as he said it, you know, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go build something special. You know, we're, you know, we were able to kind of rebuild that program at Providence Grove. Um, and so we know that. We got the right staff to be able to do the I mean, y'all took here. them to their first playoff win. Yep, I exactly. Mean, and I don't think he's, you've had but, what, maybe three losing seasons that whole time? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that one, uh, the first playoff win was especially, you know, that was great for me personally just because I've seen those playoff games where we've lost, close ones, got blown out and stuff. But uh, that one was real special for me, absolutely. And when you became a coach, I mean – People don't realize this, and I know some people are like, oh, the whole coaching staff is at Asheboro, but people don't realize your head coach, look at college, look at the pros. They take their coaching staff because oh, yeah. you're a one unit. Mm -hmm. I yep. mean, you guys are best friends. I mean, Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, that's the that's one of the benefits of being a part of this coaching staff. We are all best friends. You know, we, we talk outside of work, you know, about everything, life, football, anything we talk about it. Um, you know, we all get along, and that's one of the big benefits of, or one of the reasons why we all wanted to come together, you know, to Asheboro to help build something because we all wanted to do it together as a staff just like we did, you know, PG. And speaking of that, during the bye week, let's get to that. Uh, anything you worked on, Coach? Uh, you know, just trying to get better, you know. Um, that's what we kind of preach every single practice is just be better, be better, you know, be even a little bit better than you were to practice before, to play before, to snap before. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to fix some things up front in the run game a little bit. Um, but I think we're getting there, and I think uh, I think this week it'll actually you know finally pay off for us. I think we're going to have some success in the run game, that's for sure. All right, coach, I don't want you to pancake me on this, but uh, <laughs> let's 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 talk some stats, okay? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so the first one I want to bring up, I got to brag: five hundred and forty-one passing, five TDs. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's some pretty good pass blocking. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to argue with those stats in the pass game. In two uh, weeks, fans. Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we've been we've been great up front in our pass protection. Um, those guys, I could tell, they kind of have a pride in trying to, you know, keep Logan standing upright and give him time to deliver those balls, those athletes that we have out there. So uh, those guys have stepped up huge in our pass protection. You know. And you know, I gotta say the next stat, coach. <laughs> I know you know it's coming. Hit you, me with it. Go ahead. Thirty-five rushing yards. Yeah. What is going on with the run block? Uh, well, I think it's and know, it's not all your fault. I mean, no, it's it's a combination of a lot of things. You know, we can have four guys up front doing their job perfectly and then one guy mess up or you know running back hits the wrong hole yep. or maybe there's some bad timing in the backfield handing off so it's been a it's been a multitude of things um but i think for the most part we're finally getting those things hemmed up and you know past two games we faced some stellar defensive linemen you know um Albemarle, you know they had some huge guys up front i mean they that bleed were, football now yeah <laughs> they, they bleed football so they were hard to move and then like you talked about earlier you know mr carolina over at, uh Easton Randolph, he he's a load, and um, but I think things are heading in the right direction, and I think we're really going to see that this week against PG. I mean, looking back at film, what what mistakes did you see that you needed to work on? Um, the biggest thing is just assignment, you know, knowing mm -hmm. what we're doing on every play. Um, I tell my guys all the time, I grade on two things, and that's assignment and effort. And I can say 100% that the effort's there. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys they are working as hard as they can. They're getting after it. Um, but we have just a couple little mental mistakes. Like I said, five or four guys could be right and one guy's wrong. Yep. You know, or that, like you said, the running back hits the wrong. Yeah, guy. It, you know, it hurts things. But we're, you know, we're finally getting to the point where I think these guys they're starting to figure it out. It's starting to become second nature to them. And your line is stepping up, coach. And what's crazy is our episode last week was called "Compete." And coach, you got some competition in the starting lineup. 
Oh yeah, yeah. We've had some competition pretty much all year in our uh, starting five up front. Um, you know, we've had a couple hiccups at center, so we've tried two different guys there, and you know, they're right there with each other, competing every single practice. And I tell my guys all the time, and I tell them as a group, you know, look, you know, if something's not working, we're gonna figure something out. You know, if that means somebody else is playing that spot, or we have to move positions around, and so be it. But you know, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it figured out. So yeah. And uh, I heard uh, you said you mentioned center coach. I heard you. Uh, out of nowhere, got a center that uh, his knowledge is just incredible, and he's 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 competing for yeah, that spot. Yeah, he's um he's actually a fifth year senior for us, which nice. is you know he had some uh, medical issues last year, um, but he's finally kind of gotten out of that, and mm -hmm. he was eligible to play with us this year. And his first his first week to actually be able to play was against Eastern Randolph, and like I said, you know we had a couple hiccups at center, so I said, hey, let's give him a shot. And he had the hardest job in the stadium having to block um, Big Janai from Eastern Randolph. <laughs> yeah. But he held his own. You know, he got after it. He stepped up. And like you said, his knowledge for the game is just awesome. You know, every time, every time I tell him something, he picks it up right there. Doesn't have to ask me any more questions. Um, yeah, he's been great. I heard that uh, he was during practice. You just were blown away with his knowledge that you were trying to explain something, and then he was also helping other people understand their yeah. assignment. Yeah, so uh, for the first couple of weeks he was there, you know, he couldn't really um, practice with us, but he was standing behind my drills, listening and everything like that. And uh, one of the other guys turned around and asked me a question, and all of a sudden I hear Jorge behind me answering that question for me. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, that, <laughs> he, he hasn't really gotten a chance to get in there and do it, but he, you know, he's paying attention, he's getting those mental reps. And I think that's big for our whole team is just get mental reps. Even if you're not actively in, you know, be listening, watching your position, knowing what's going on. And, I mean, do we know who your starting center is this week yet? Uh, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Because um, this is a battle. I mean, it, I mean it week is a one, battle. your like, starter, it went bat. Tell me his name again. Jesse. Oh. Jesse was our starter week one, and then Jorge was our starter uh, week two. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's still a battle between both of them. You know, both of them have really good things that they do. Um, you know, if you have a bad snap here or there, you know, it's hard to, mm -hmm. it's hard to fix that immediately. So, you know, it could be next guy up if there's one bad snap. So, and, yeah. they, and they know that and they understand that and they've accepted it. So, yeah. Well, it goes back to that, uh, what we talked about earlier, the O-line is the most important position. Yeah. They're the one that you, you could be beast mode all game, never mm -hmm. credit. But as soon as you let that yeah. D lineman come through and oh, sack yeah. them one time, you're oh, yeah. the, you're, you get them out of there. And, that, and that, <laughs> that, that's the hardest part, especially at center. I mean, you have one bad snap, man, everybody knows it and everybody sees it. And, you know, that's a tough spot. You're dealing with some big old guys right there in front of you. And you got to snap a ball and block this guy at the same time. You know, it's, it's a hard task. And, uh, you got a hard task coming ahead of you. Providence Grove defense only allowing 13 points per game. How mm -hmm. are you preparing for this defense? Um, really, we're just, you know, we're trying to get a little tougher in our run game. Um, we've hit the sled every single day um, at practice and, you know, just trying to build up a little bit of that grittiness. I know if we come out there physical and uh, get after him from the jump that we're going to have some success. And uh, also hemming up a little, you know, a couple of things in our pass pro that we can fix. You know, like I said, it's been great, but there's always stuff you can fix. And so just doing those little things. And like I said, just getting better every day. You know, a little bit better every day goes a long way. And uh, speaking of that, uh, your first away game, uh, any emotions going through not only your first away game as an Ashburn yeah. coach, but against not only your old coaching school, but your alma mater. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of emotions. Um, you know, just this past Friday on our bye week, you know, we went down there and watched them play Bishop McGinnis. And, you know, seeing some of the faces from the community I grew up in, you know, that's great. Seeing some of our former players who graduated, that was great. Were they heckling you a little bit? Yeah, not too much. <laughs> not too bad. You know, they're a pretty nice crowd over there. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of emotion standing on the the other sideline that I've never you know stood on before and seeing it from different views. But it's going to be great, and uh, we're all jacked up about it. And now you're looking at the motorcycle coming at you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. We're seeing that motorcycle come out of the tunnel instead of running behind it. But no, it's going to be a great atmosphere. I know Asheboro is going to pack that place out. PG is always going to pack that place out. It's going to be a really good environment. So you're telling me the fans need to get their bus to Providence Grove Absolutely. for this yes. first away game? Yes, yes, yes. And you got at Randall in the second week. Yeah, yeah. So it don't get easier. You know, <laughs> it's just another new challenge. But you know, and I even have a little bit of history with Randleman. My dad went there. A lot of my family went there. Okay. You know, so it seems like every game, you know, there's something, a little bit of personal, you know, stuff going on. So do we need to have like a camp at Averett so we can uh, you know, bring that emotion? Out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh huh. So as you know, two straight. I mean, how do you get your I mean, your your guys ready for two straight. I mean, it one away game is fine, but two straight away games against two very tough opponents. Yeah, um, it's just you know, 
it's just taking that next step you know every every snap of the ball just try to be a little bit better you know we can't really look ahead you know and I, mm -hmm. sometimes i don't even like to look ahead to the game that's coming up let's look ahead to practice you know how can we better be better at this next practice how can we be better on the next snap of the ball and you know like i said those things they build up and eventually you know once it comes game time it's all second nature and they can just fly around and have fun and i know you say you, you only look at it one day at a time you don't look to the future too much but in three weeks there's going to be a jumbotron you got to be looking forward to that. i am looking forward to that yes that's <laughs> going to be great ready to see some of your videos up there <laughs> and you guys you can see your old lineman up there they can actually get credit yeah they, they can, can finally get a little bit of credit yeah uh-huh <laughs> And uh, what does our O-line look like now age-wise? Are they seniors, juniors? I'm trying to figure out what. So we kind of have a, a pretty good mix. Um, our uh, starting left tackle, uh, Guillermo Santos, he's a senior. He's our only senior right now in the um, starting lineup besides Jorge, like I mentioned or earlier, our fifth-year senior. Um, and then we got Boone Hensley at a left guard. He's a sophomore, so great young talent. Um, Jesse, our other center, he's a junior. And then at right guard, we got Quintez Butler, who's a junior. And then at right tackle, we got Chris Spivey, who's a junior. So, you know, we're going to have a lot of talent coming back um, next year. And um, we've got a really good leader right now in Guillermo Santos. He's kind of our anchor on that O-line. He kind of keeps everybody together, keeps them on the right track. So it's great to have him out there helping me. And I got to ask, every time I post a video of this podcast, they talk about Spivey. <laughs> they want to interview with Spivey. <laughs> is there something I don't know, Coach? Is he just I, I, see, is he a comedian? It or? must be something neither one of us know because, I mean, out there at practice, he's a pretty quiet guy. Uh, you know, he just puts his head down and he goes to work for the most part. So, I mean, I don't know what he's doing out of practice to make everybody want him on the podcast, but he's a great kid, awesome kid. I think we're going to have to bring him on sometime. You're going to have to. You're going to yeah. let me borrow him. Can I, can I get him on the yeah, yeah. podcast? Yeah, maybe you can get something out of him. I don't get too much out of him, so, yeah, maybe you can. And one of my last few questions, Coach, uh, Santos, you just mentioned him being a leader. You said he's a senior, junior. Senior? senior yep okay and uh i mean number 70 right uh, i believe so yeah um is he just i mean what is his energy there because he seemed like the weight room quiet but when it the switch hits he's a different man it seems like he he always kind of seems to have this even kill about him until you know it's time to start hitting somebody and yeah. he loves that stuff you know he just he's a football guy and this is actually only his second year playing football wow which is amazing um but he's picked everything up super fast for me and like i said he Back in the spring, me and Coach Brown, we seen that you know he was going to be a leader for us up front mm -hmm. and a, a leader for this team, and he's accepted that role. And you know, if somebody gets out of line, he's quick to you know correct them. Or if somebody messes up, hey, no problem. On to the next play. You know, he's picking everybody up. You know. And Coach, you you got so much passion for this game, and uh, your coaching staff, your co co coaching staff, or have <laughs> like that. Um, how, what does it mean to you to be able to go fight with your brothers every week as a coach? Man, that's that's the biggest thing about football is just you get to line up, you know, you you know playing. You get to line up beside you know the guys you've always grown up grown up with, and you get to you know go to war against another team. Um, but also to be able to do it as a coaching staff, you know, we've been together for so long that, you know, when we have success, we all are having success and we're all having fun, and it just makes it real special on Friday nights when you're able to pull off that win. And especially week one. I mean, I saw all the emotions. I saw you oh, yeah. running down the sidelines, yeah. Coach Brown grabbing you mm -hmm. and telling you proud and yep. all that. I mean, it was – Yeah, I got emotional watching mm -hmm. you guys, uh, the excitement for that first win. Yeah. And it's week one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Football's it's an emotional sport, you know. And uh, so being able to get that first win was huge for us, um, huge for us as a staff and as a program. We're just, you know, we're just going to continue to get better and uh, pour everything into this program. And that two and one sounds really good if we can grab that against Providence Grove. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Anything you can tell the fans to get them there Friday night? Hey, be there. It's going to be a show. You know, we're going to we're going to try to light it up. Um, we're going to get it going in the run game. You know, you're finally going to be able to see some good run. I'm game, holding hopefully. you to it, coach. I'm uh, holding it. <laughs> hold, hold it to me. I, want, I need somebody to. Um, but no, show up. It's going to be great. Awesome. And uh, coach, thanks for joining us for Inside the Blue Comets Locker Room. And uh, fans, we finally gave it to you. We talked about <laughs> Coach Parrish about every episode. And uh, you got to hear from him. So That's thanks, right. coach. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are you looking for an atmosphere where you feel you belong like Friday Night Blue Comets Lights? Coach's Neighborhood Grill is the place to be. Plenty of room for your family and friends to enjoy a good quality meal with a great team. Coach's Neighborhood Grill, proud sponsor of Beyond the End Zone, Blue Comets Football Podcast.
Coach, I don't think you could find a more knowledgeable, supporting, and just good staff, team, and everything. I mean, Logan from Logan Laughlin, Elijah Woodle, uh, Coach Handy, now Coach Taylor, Coach Parrish, and Amari Godwin. Yeah, you know, I've got a great staff. Them guys are incredible. They do a great job uh, coaching our kids, being leaders for our kids. And then our players, man, I can't say enough about them. Just great attitudes, great players, work ethic is incredible, um, and just great young men, and it shows in these interviews with them. So the rumor has it is uh, Amari Godwin takes Spanish. So apparently he does. Uh, Amari Godwin's a smart young man, and it shows on the football field. I did not know he was that, uh, you know, well off there in Spanish, but apparently he is. You got a away game this Friday, not just one, but two in a row. How do you prepare your team to go on the road two straight weeks? Well, we, uh, we prepare the exact same way. Uh, we will talk this week. We've talked this week about um, going into Providence Grove. The atmosphere there is really good. Uh, you know, it's going to be packed, Coach. It's going to be packed. <laughs> they have one of the best interests in high school football, the way they come out behind Harley Davidson's. That's something we started there about six, seven years ago, and I think it's one of the best interests you know, around in high school football. So in away teams, it kind of can catch you off guard if you're not prepared for it. Uh, and then the next week we'll go to Randleman, who that's another tough place to play. It's a loud place. Uh, their fans are right on top of you. So we've got two challenging road games ahead, so we're going to have to be locked in, focused, and ready to go uh, and just worry about what's between the lines. We can't worry about the outside stuff. Uh, if we'll just focus between the lines, we'll be all right. And, Coach, um, I'm already hearing rumors. I actually go to a church up in Pleasant Garden. Uh, they're ready for you all to come to their house. It's going to be packed out. I even heard the student section has a theme and everything. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the atmosphere at Providence Grove football games have come a long ways, and it's exciting. It's, it's fun to play in that atmosphere. Now, I've never been on the other side of it, uh, but I enjoy things like that. Uh, anytime we go on away trips and there's a good atmosphere as a coach, I enjoy that. It, it gets me excited and ready to go. I'm sure you're going to grab some of them by the neck and give them hugs uh, after the game. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I've told a few people, our, my emotions will, will get the best on me probably after the game. Uh, there's a few of them guys that I'm really, really close to. Uh, Logan Fox in particular, I still talk to him every week. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot of history there, and uh, I care about them guys a lot. I want them to be successful. So there will be some emotions going, but we'll, we'll be professional throughout the game and focus on win, trying to win for Ashboro. Uh, but after the game, we'll definitely find those guys and, you know, talk with them and, and hug them in different things. And with the emotions going, uh, what are you uh, preparing this week? I mean, after a bye week, usually coaches use the bye week to change up things. Is there anything you're allowed to tell us that you're changing up? Uh, no, honestly, we haven't changed much. Uh, we have taken this week uh, to get better. Uh, our guys still learning a new system. Uh, we can't implement too many new things. Uh, we're still learning what we're trying to get going. Uh, a few years down the road and we got more things going, Maybe we can do that, but right now we're just trying to focus on us and get better. And we talked to Coach Parrish about this, but I want to get your point on it as well. Uh, you're going against a defense that's only given up 13 get points per a game. Um, how do you prepare for that? Yeah, defensively they do a great job. They're very sound and fundamental, um, so we just got to take advantage of some things. Uh, hopefully our passing game, we can find some holes in their defense uh, throughout the passing game. And then running the ball, I think we've gotten a lot better, so I'm excited to see what our run game can do this week as well. And with the run game, Jalen Moore possibly being out, possibly playing, who should we expect to fill in that role? Kai Matthews, who had a, a, a several great runs for Cesar Randolph, he's very explosive. Him and uh, T.J. Mark will be the guys mainly uh, getting the ball in, uh, offensively in place of Jalen, if Jalen is not 100%. And fans don't realize this. We talked about it last week. But you got, you got know, your running backs are slot receivers. Y'all really don't have a true running back. So it, it shows you your skills position that they can go from the slot receiver to the running back. Yeah, we've got several guys like that, and uh, we'll, we're even going to get Aiden Robinson involved a little bit as we, as we continue to go. Uh, he's another guy that's very capable. Uh, just trying to find different ways to get some of the athletes the ball uh, in the run game as well as the passing game. And two weeks later, Coach, uh, there's rumors that there's going to be a beautiful Jumbotron right there on the football field. Yes. DJ Stone. Yes, this week our, our Jumbotron is being installed. Uh, excited about that. Uh, it should be ready to go for homecoming. Uh, September 22nd against uh, Southwest Randolph. So we're excited about that. That's going to be something great for our school and our community. Listen, Coach, my birthday is the 23rd, so you're taking away that from me now. You're going to put a Jumbotron out the day before my birthday? And be part of your birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I think that's going to bring a lot because, like you said, with the entrance of Providence Grove, that's really great. I think with the Jumbotron, you're going to have a lot of unique and cool things that you can do for athletics. Absolutely. You know, anytime you can find something that's unique for your school, uh, you know, Providence Grove, they, they enter behind the motorcycles. That's unique for Providence Grove. Uh, so Ashboro, we need to get our own identity and what's kind of unique for us in the entrance and, and stuff. And I think this Jumbotron, which nobody in Randolph County has, is something that can be special for us. 
And uh, we're going to remind everybody, Coach and I challenged you last week, uh, this Friday, September 8th, 7.30 p.m. at Providence Grove. Be there to cheer on your blue comments. Take a photo. You know, we won't make it be a selfie. You can have your friend grab it and take a photo of you at the game. Post it in this comment or last week's episode comment. And Coach and I are going to select a random fan. And we're going to hook them up with an awesome t-shirt, Coach. They're, they're really unique this year. I like them. That's right. Give them an Ashburg football t-shirt. Uh, hopefully, we can pack the stands and get a lot of people there. And hopefully, get a lot of selfies that night letting us know that they're there. Yeah, I mean, the support, and uh, I feel like the community's been behind you, Coach, and even a close loss. Well, I think we proved to everybody that we're going to at least compete uh, and go out and, and play hard, and I think fans want to see that. If you can compete, even if you don't come out on the right side on the scoreboard, if you're playing hard and it's a competitive game, that's fun for fans to go and watch, and we proved that we're going to do that last week. And any words of encouragement to the listeners, the fans, Blue Comet Nation? Just we, we need a whole bunch of people there Friday night at Providence Grove, and let's pack them stands. Coach, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to being there. I want to thank Coach's Neighborhood Grill for being our sponsor for this episode of Beyond the End Zone Blue Comets Football. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to get the ball in the end zone in this all-access podcast for you, the fans, on your Blue Comets football. Thanks for listening. This episode was sponsored by Coach's Neighborhood Grill. Make sure you go by and support them for their support of Blue Comets football. Are you a business wanting to support Beyond the End Zone, Blue Comets football podcast? Don't miss your chance to be a sponsor for this all-access podcast on your Asheboro Blue Comets. Contact us at sportsintheborough22 at gmail.com and learn about your sponsorship opportunities. Again, that is sportsintheborough22, all one word, at gmail.com. Contact us today.